Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Esteemed Gentleman Podcast for Friday, March 12th. It's the weekly wrap-up where we look at the news stories that matter to us and hopefully matter to you. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. I'm Scott Labrie, the host, and join alongside me, as always, we have the big cat, Tyler Sunt. <laughs> 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 and we Hello. have all day Eric DeShane. Hello. 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 And uh, yeah, we're going to go through some of the news stories. Got a couple interesting ones for you. But before that, we're going to go through our weeks, what we've been playing, what we've been watching. Uh, anybody want to volunteer to go first? Sure. I can right. go first. Go <laughs> for it. We finally finished up Ozark season three. Ooh. Like all the seasons, it ended with a bang. Literally, <laughs> brains <laughs> everywhere. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the next season of that. That's the most stressful show I've ever seen. So, really, yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely the most stressful. Mm. And freaking um, Jason Bateman is amazing. He's so good. Actually, all the actors on that show are incredible. Yeah, is uh, if you guys haven't seen it yet, you need to watch it. Mm -hmm. You need to watch it. It's, it's tough just to watch one episode. It's on my list, yeah. I keep but like passing o over it through the Netflix thing, and I'm like, it's always the the bummer though. It's like, uh, am I ready to to commit right now to, <laughs> to three seasons? It's like, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll watch. You know what? Murder Honestly, I was yeah, I was in the same same boat as you before. Like, I used to just pass over it, and I'm like, oh yeah, on IMDb, it's got like super high ratings, and I've heard nothing but good things about. It. I'm like, oh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it, and I'm like, you know what? fuck it i'm just gonna bite the bullet and we're gonna watch it and holy fuck man like it's it's so good <laughs> it is so good we had to take a little bit of a break because the stress was just way too high wow like it was so stressful it's like man i don't know i would have just gave up halfway through the first season <laughs> i would have just fucking shot myself for sure like it was just wow. like that, that's, a, that's a terrible joke but like um but it's just it no matter what these guys do they're always fucked. You know, they have one small victory, 18 more problems blossom from it. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's too much, man. There's not too much because it's so good. And it's actually like realistic. I could see this actually happening if you were kind of in the same position, but it's just, it's so ruthless and nonstop. Like even the slow parts are super tense. It's so good. Definitely. What show would you like compare it to? Oh man. Uh, what would I compare it to? Like, like you saying, like they have a small victory and then, you know they get fucked. Like kind of remind me like how Game of Thrones is, where it's like yeah, they have it, a small kinda... victory like in usually like the third episode and like the, the second to last episode, and then it's like yeah, fuck you. Yeah. yeah, it always seems that way. Like near the end of the first season, it's like you know what, you know there's there's a little bit of a a sunrise just on the horizon. It's just starting to crest, and then something just absolutely retarded happens. Like just like insane happens, and it just it spirals into the next season, and it just. It's always something. So yeah, I would compare the stress and the constant not knowing what the hell's going to happen to Game of Thrones for sure. Hmm. But uh, the difference between that and Game of Thrones is like you have your constants. You have the bird family, mm -hmm. and it's it's based around them throughout the whole time. So, and then you get obviously new characters, and then there's different families involved too, and how they all kind of connect and everything, and the cartels and all that stuff. And hmm. I don't know. It's a uh, it's a mix of just what everything. It's like it's got Scarface. It's got a little bit of Sopranos kind of idea, and it's got whatever. It's just kind of yeah, it's a different um, perspective on the whole thing. It's like because they're obviously money launderers. Mm -hmm. Well, Marty is, and that's that's from his perspective, right? Like he just wants to make a living. He wants what's best for his kids and his wife. But uh, yeah, like there's just I don't know. I could go into detail, but it's hmm. so good. Hmm. It is so good. Hmm. And uh, so we watched that and. Didn't really watch much else. Like I watched like Leia's back home finally. Like she had a nice little hiatus with her grandmother there, uh, visiting with her. So she's back now. So that's been keeping us entertained quite a bit. Don't really have time for that kind of stuff. But uh, we, uh, I downloaded uh, a game that was on sale on PlayStation Store: Detroit Become Human. Mm -hmm. And I, we've been thoroughly enjoying that. I'm a mm. huge fan of Quantic Quantic Dream, like the Heavy Rain and. Uh, the first one that they made on PlayStation. Beyond was okay, but um, Beyond Souls, or whatever, Lost Souls. I can't remember what the, it was. Got Willem Dafoe in it. Beyond Two but, Souls is that what? It was? That's the one. That's the one. Two Souls. I was close. I yeah. knew I was close. But um, this one is incredible. It's like they polished up all of these ideas, what worked in all the other games, and they put it in this one, and it's it's flawless. 
cool. it is so good cool. and all your every tiny little decision makes a completely <laughs> different scenario happen so i i love it we love it carly and i've been playing that that's that's it's like watching a tv show on that because there's little episodes with each you play as three different androids and you make choices for them Right, and uh, Carly's only let two of them die so far. So, because <laughs> um, I'm playing it, and I'm like, "Hey, for this playthrough, I'm gonna let you make all the choices." She's like, "Okay." She doesn't want to play; she just wants to sit and make right. the choices, right? And then, because whenever the action starts, it's kind of like Resident Evil Four, where you have to like quickly hit L1, hit yeah. X, mm. and then do the swoop around, whatever. Right? It's just stuff like that. It's all so quick she, time stuff, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And it's as like you can't just put the controller down when there's a cutscene because it's all a big cutscene. Then there's walking around too here and there, but you make. Like, there's one part where you've got this little girl, it's raining, and you have four choices of how you want to go about finding shelter. There's four different ways that this can go, and they, there's just, when you, and when you're done the episode, uh, it's over, and then it goes over an overview of the timeline of what could have happened, and you look, and you're like, holy shit, this could have went 18 different ways, man. Like, completely different stuff I, I i i love it that's that's mm. right up my alley I, it's very good so that's, so with, that's, with a game like that though tyler does it have replay value in it though because you're learning the story as it goes on mm -hmm. you, you play you keep you do you go back and play it again and again or is it just you yeah know? oh yeah you, you totally could because i mean the choices that carly made were complete opposite that well, i would have made okay like oh i'm gonna let this this um android go and i'm like i would have just shot it i wouldn't have even hesitated <laughs> so it's like it could have made like a completely different thing and then like the way she talks to one of the characters like you can kind of tell that he's you know uh well hank or whatever he's troubled so carly is like trying to pressure him into opening up and it just makes him more and more pissed off because the co-stars of the show like have attitudes like they're neutral or they like you or they don't like you so this one character like carly is just I think is probably the lowest you can make a character. She just pissed this guy right <laughs> off. And he's like, now they're separated. And like, you get these little notifications, um, like a little green icon shows up in the top corner when you make a choice and something happens that's going to affect the entire timeline. And Ooh. she's gotten like, I think one, maybe two, just from this one character. She just keeps <laughs> saying the wrong thing to like constantly. And I'm just like, oh, what are, you do are you sure this is what you want to say? <laughs> she's like, well, I don't know. I'm not a cop because she's playing like a cop android, right? With right. this alcoholic detective. And oh, it's so, so good. Wow. It's really good. You guys should honestly check it out. It's it's mm. pretty cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks on PlayStation Store. Mm hmm. It's so good. You just sit down and make choices, and just I might even have that from like PlayStation Plus one month, maybe. I think it it might have been. I think I remember that because I was like, oh, I should get PlayStation Plus just to get this game. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, I highly recommend it if you guys want to just sit down and enjoy like a good story. Oh, it's got Lance Hendrickson too at the beginning. He's in the beginning of it. He's mm -hmm. had a whole little thing. Mm -hmm. You guys know who he is? He's in the Alien movie. He's the mm -hmm. he's an Android. Uh, I think is yeah. it Alien? I think he's hey, in that one. Oh, it's Alien vs. Predator. Oh. oh. That's Oh, him. yes, he that's is. Yeah. He's the is. old guy in that one. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's in a bunch of other shows. Oh, I just yeah. can't put my thumb on it. He's one of those guys that's in everything, but you just don't mm -hmm. know which ones they are. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was uh, that was my week. Playing nice. that. Yeah. Ozark. Ozark. Yeah, I'll have to check that out one day. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they I, have a release date for season four yet, or no? I think it's later this fall. I'm pretty um, sure they finally announced because there was a while it'd been uh, on the back burner. Right. So I think it's going to be, let's see, I'm just going to check it real quick here. And if my internet decides to do something, it won't. So it's later this year. <laughs> cool. Yeah, maybe I'll catch up before that comes out then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm sure you'll burn through it quick. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Eric, do you want me to go or you want to go? No, I well, mine, I'll go because mine wasn't really an eventful week. Um, yeah, I was staying pretty low key. Uh, worked all week here. It was pretty tough. So I, I come home pretty t tired quite a bit this week here. So I didn't really watch a hell of a lot. Um, I just caught up on, you know, the WandaVision, which we'll talk until later on. And mm -hmm. uh, that, that was about it. Like, that's really it. No other new shows or I didn't even game at all this week. I was just, I've been. Literally coming home and getting going to bed right away, pretty much, and just been doing whatever we can between that. But watching mostly tutorial videos on how to edit and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. to, to watch new shows or catch up on anything, like no, I, I've done nothing this week. It's just been a hectic work week. So no, yeah, unfortunately, it was pretty well, low key for me on my end. Yeah, 
We'll hopefully have that uh, Red Dead Online video coming out maybe mm -hmm. this weekend, if not. Uh, if not the weekend, if not next week sometime, yeah. So. Yeah, that'll be yeah. exciting. Soonish, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. That, that's my thing is editing more videos and getting to that more or less. So, yeah. So more of that. Yeah. I, I've been watching on YouTube um, the kind of funny channel play. Uh, they've been playing like Super Mario uh, 3D World mm -hmm. on Switch. And it's like, okay, that's that's gonna be a couch one that we're gonna have to play because it's, like, it's just so <laughs> chaotic. They like everybody's was... like bouncing off each other their heads mm -hmm. and picking each other up and accidentally yeah. throwing them off the stage and stuff. Yeah. We need to play more more versus games against each other because yeah. <laughs> that'll be good. Yeah, and uh, I had a I watched like a, actually quite a bit this week. I first started off the week <laughs> by, I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I started up <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh and I watched like the first seven episodes and man, that show is just like, just makes things up like at every turn. It's like, does yeah. not follow the actual game yeah. at all. It's just like, whatever. <laughs> it's like whatever that they need to make up to move the story along, that they'll do it. It doesn't matter. But it's kind of interesting to look back at that and like, one of the yeah. funniest things was, like, in the first episode, of course, everybody knows, Yugi draws Exodia and beats Kaiba in his three blue eyes white dragons. And you're like, well, damn, Yugi's got, like, the best freaking cards in the game. He could just get these five cards and he wins no matter what. And then, like, two episodes later, this fucking guy named Weevil is like, hey, can I see your Exodia cards? And Yugi's like, sure, here you go. And he just, like, tosses them off the boat into the ocean. It's like, why would you do that? But it's For a good, plot? Exactly. Like, like, it's a good plot device to be like, well, now he doesn't have those cards anymore. It's yeah, like, exactly, yeah. And you're just like, we fuck this Weevil guy. <laughs> we uh, made the strongest cards in the game. Well, that's shit. That's episode <laughs> one. Gotta get rid of them now, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And Kaiba, too, he's like, I got all four blue eyes. Let me just rip the fourth one for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, then I got into, like, a bunch of murder documentaries after that. What the uh, hell? Yeah, dramatic change. Um, Did you have him with, with a glass of wine while you're out of there, too, as well? And so fantasizing about being with him as well? Or what the no, hell? Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I watched actually four documentaries. Three of them are murder oriented. One is it, and I'll, I'll go in order of like mm -hmm. best worst or worst to best. I'll say uh, the first one, worst one, was the one I watched a couple nights ago called uh, American Murder, a family next door, and it's about a murder that happened like I think in 2018. It's really recent, and uh, it they use a lot of like social media footage of like the wife, the wife and like two like toddler girls go missing mm -hmm. and it's like well the husband seems real shifty they have like this doorbell cam footage of him backing his truck up like to the garage and then the neighbor's like he never lo 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 loads his tools from the garage like mm -hmm. and it's like mm, that's a little suspicious and then you're like man I hope it's not the dad and then of course <laughs> there is no mysteries like yeah it's the dad the whole time oh yeah of course and yeah. uh, it's like all right, well, it's just kind of interesting, and then just kind of going through, like, their relationship for the most part, where, like, they're in love, and then eventually he starts cheating on her, and the bummer part is, like, at the very end, even they're, like, they get him to describe, like, how he, like, killed his wife and kids, and it's like, ah, man, I did not you need to hear how he yeah. killed his kids, like, and... It, like I'll, I don't know if I want to say like where he hit his kids because it's also really fucked up where he hit his kids, um, but fuck it, I'll say it. Um, so he works at like he's a he's a, um, a oil well uh, checker or whatever. Nope. And uh, yeah, he uh, put mm -hmm. put the two girls in like the oil tanks, and it was like Jesus fuck, man. Oh wow, brutal. <laughs> So that Jeez. that was the last one I watched a couple days ago, and I was like, ah, I'm gonna take a break from murder documentaries <laughs> for a while yeah. now. Uh, but uh, the one that kind of got me started on it was um, uh, "Murder Among the Mormons," which is like a three. It was another three E part uh, documentary, kind of like Night Stalker. That's kind of why I watched it. It was going to be short and sweet. And it was really yeah. interesting because there's this, essentially this guy named Mike or Mark Hoffman. And 
the way with Mormons is like they're super into collecting old documents, old books that deal with like early Mormonism and stuff. And there's like this whole business to selling old documents. And this Hoffman guy was really good at finding old stuff. And uh, he found this old letter that was written by um, the guy who essentially created Mormonism, Joseph Smith. He, the, this tale is the tale is he met an angel and the angel brought him to like the woods yeah. and it was like hey dig up <laughs> these gold plates and translate them and that's the book of mormon essentially yeah, and uh, i think that's all track episode i remember that <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's very strange but like in this in this letter it, it says from written by joseph smith and they even got authenticated and it's real it's like, oh no, he didn't see an angel. He saw a white salamander that led him to the spot or whatever. And that was a big deal because it's like, well, that's changing the origins of the whole, like, you know, yeah. religion oh and God. stuff like that. That's so, like, right. so it was a big deal. And then um, later on, this Hoffman guy finds like another collection of letters from uh, Joseph Smith's mom. And apparently, it, like, dives into that. It's like, well, it's actually his brother. That saw the angel first or something like that. So he's like, well, I need to buy these uh, letters. I need funding, though, so he gets some business partners to give him some money to, to buy these letters. And in the meantime, they're, like, waiting for these letters. And uh, he finds this thing called the Oath of a Free Man, which is, like, the very first page ever printed in America. And it was, like, said to be lost, and it's, like, well, it's a priceless artifact. It's the first, like, thing ever printed in America. And right. they're like, wow, how'd you find that? And they get it authenticated by, like, you know, the FBI. They get it sent to this um, university in California where they, like, shoot, like, photons or electrons at, at it to, like, determine if the ink if is yeah, old, if it, if real and old. Properly, yeah. Exactly, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. well, it comes back, and it, it was real, so, like... That they were going to sell it for $1.5 million. And all of a sudden, um, they're waiting for this thing to come back and get, get and sell. And his business partner uh, gets a pipe bomb in the, like, in the mail and blows up and dies. And his other business partner, his wife, also gets a package bomb and she dies. Holy shit. So they're like, whoa, whoa what's going on? And then like, they're like... Telling Mark, like, hey, maybe it's, like, you know, maybe it's the church or something, you know. You know, get out of your house. So he gets out of the house. And then, like, a couple days later, he blows up in his car. But, <gasps> he, but he lives there. The ambulance is able to pick him up. They get uh, uh, surgery done on him, and he lives. And so now they have, in, in Salt Lake City, Utah, where there's, like, no murders at all. They're like, well, fuck, man. There's a serial bomber <laughs> going around killing people. <laughs> So they're, like, trying to figure out what's happening. And uh, what ends up happening is, like, they find out that it was Hoffman who actually killed everybody. Um, oh. Because he was actually, like, a genius forger. And he had, like, a bunch of techniques to, like, age the paper, age the ink. Um, like, he would, like, put the paper in a glass aquarium with, like, exposed wire and, like, salt and water mixture and, like, ozonated the air inside the tank to age the paper. And, like, he had, like, chemical mixture of the ink to, like, match what would be the ink during that time. And then, oh. he, like, he knew, like, well, this ink is very acidic. And what happens with paper is, like, it'll brown the paper. It'll kind of, like, seep through it. So he would, like, write it on the paper and then take a vacuum and kind of like vacuum the back of the paper to kind of draw the ink into the paper more and stuff like that. Holy! And he, wow. he like he, he fooled everybody. He like he fooled the FBI and everything. And they got well, the police in Utah. Like eventually, got like super two super. I don't know uh, forgery detectives to, to finally crack the case. And uh, yeah, he was essentially like. He needed to sell that oath of the free man to pay off like his business partners because one of his business partner was kind of like getting sick or tired of waiting. It was like I think he's a liar. I think he might be making this stuff up. So, he'd, but it wasn't coming fast enough. So he's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna bomb you and blow you up." Jesus! Wow. Yeah, it was. Uh, that one was pretty crazy. Like, I recommend watching that one. I'm of course kind of gave everything away, but it's still kind of <laughs> yeah, interesting yeah. to see. 
just goes way into left field. <laughs> <laughs> it wow. is. It's like, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, yeah. A couple other ones I saw. One was the long shot. Uh, it's a forty-minute documentary of this guy who he gets charged for murder, and he's he's innocent. So like, it's a, following the case on how his lawyer gets him off, and is like, well, he's at he was at the Dodgers game when that murder takes place. So they like show like they're like going through all the Dodgers footage and stuff like that and going through the stadium cameras and live feeds and it's like, oh there he is. They got they found found a picture of yeah. him there. And it's like, oh he's free. It's like, well the resolution wasn't very good. So it's it's hard to say. Oh my God. So, so the guy's like shit. So it's like, well what can else what else can you tell us about um that evening? And he goes on to explain, he's like, well, I remember there was a camera crew uh, in our section and there was security blocking the aisle when he was like taking his little girl to get ice cream or something. Right. And so the lawyer contacts the Dodgers and it's like, well, was there, you know, uh, a production being filmed there? And they find out that uh, an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm <laughs> was being filmed. Oh, my at, God. At, yes, at, I've at heard of this. And they, uh, so they, they go, they go to HBO, they go and like, <laughs> like, well, we don't really show this stuff. And the guys like the lawyers, like, man, this guy's gonna, might be facing the death penalty or whatever. We, we have to like <laughs> look into this stuff. So they go through all the, all the outtakes and stuff like that. And then sure yeah. enough, he was caught, caught on like four different cameras yeah. and stuff like that. So, Jeez. so it was like it was really interesting. It's like wow, curb your enthusiasm saved some guy's life, <laughs> right? Yes, I've heard seeing that on Reddit. That's right. Yes. Jeez. And they even had like Larry David in the documentary too. He's like, yeah, sometimes I tell it at parties. Like I was, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. solve a murder. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, last one, real quick. Um, I watched it was called the Battered Bastards of Baseball. Not murder related at all, but uh, wow. it was about <laughs> Bing Russell, who is Kurt Russell's father. He owned an independent uh, single A baseball team called the Portland Mavericks back in the 1970s, like 1973 to 1977 or 78. Um, and it was essentially how. Because at the time, it was MLB had all the other teams. There was no more independent teams in America except for this one. And he, like, called open tryouts. So people, like, hitchhiked across America to come try out for his team. And they were just essentially, like, they were the bad news bears, but in real life. And they were just like, well, well, you don't give a shit. And they'll, like, piss off people and stuff like that. And it was really interesting to watch. It was... um yeah, I, I'm not going to spoil that one too much. It, it, it's kind of interesting. I'd, I'd say if you're a big fan of baseball or sports in general, it's interesting because uh, Bing, Bing Russell was quite the personality. <laughs> never oh, heard school cool. before. Oh, cool. And yeah, Kurt Russell played played mm -hmm. baseball for that team. And it's funny watching the end credits because it's like, here's where they are now. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> Kurt Russell went to be one on one of his, the biggest actors of his generation. It's like, yeah, I knew, I knew yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah that was the like, obvious one. And then there was the the Bat Boy. His name was Tom Field or something like that. Like he went to be on uh, a Oscar nominated director. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh wow! And the, the other guys like he invented Big League Chew. It's like, what's going on here? What's with everybody <laughs> being like super famous or doing something incredible after <laughs> doing this team? Right. Yeah. Mm. So there you go. Neat. Cool. Now let's okay. talk about the One Division. Oh. Yes. Yes. What did you think of the uh, the ending there, Scott? What did you think of it? Oh man, I just talked a whole lot. <laughs> um, I know you got more in you. <laughs> it was. Uh, I thought it probably could have been stretched out into two episodes. Um, the the actual ending was very emotional, and I cried like a baby. <laughs> you know what? Same here. I, like, you know, I, I yeah, openly sorry. sobbed. <laughs> right. 
Oh, uh, especially when she said, thank you for choosing me to be your mother. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. Even just talking about it right now actually makes me <laughs> choke up a little bit. <laughs> so sad. I must right? have a ice heart because I didn't really choke up or feel anything no. at all. But that, no, I yeah, there's a lot of people on Facebook that were like, whoa, this is dumb. Whoa, this is a dumb ending. Uh, I don't know. I, I liked it. Yeah, I didn't like, I, I guess... try to hope for anything. Yeah, it was sad to me because it's you know you just knew it was going to happen. It's just like the impending doom. Yeah. It's like, well, here's their final goodbye, and it's like, but it's, it's yeah. Marvel and Disney. It's not their final goodbye. It, it never it, is. It isn't. You're right. Let's yeah, that's why I'm like, oh, they're going to come back another freaking show. Why is there not going to be But still, that? though, that she has to go through all that shit all the time. She is definitely the no. Light. They're not. Know. They're going to bring the kids back for some dumb reason because that's what they always freaking do with these shows. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, I but was... it's still upsetting though. Like the the yeah. poor Wanda man. Like, but how badass did she look though when she mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. became Probably the Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch? Yeah. Holy fuck! Carly was just sitting there like just vibrating. Like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> she's my favorite. Well, she's always been her favorite. I'm like, ah, she's mm -hmm. okay. She has these little red circles that she uses to do stuff. That's yeah. all I know, right? Like whatever. And then in this one, it's just like, whole. Oh, mm -hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Like, Man, but I think game. the weakest part was the vision versus vision. Like it was good action, and then mm. the ship of thesis. <laughs> I love that. I, yeah, I love that scene. I thought it was great. I'm like, yes, you have two supercomputers talking with one another. Like, where is this going? Right? And I thought there was. You know what I mean? Longer. Longer. You know yeah. what that made me think of? Batman and Superman. Did you say Martha? <laughs> Did you say <laughs> ship, of thesis? <laughs> ship of thesis? Yeah. Uh, I request yeah. elaboration. <laughs> That's me really? Here, yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna fly away now and yeah, do that. what? Like, what do you? <laughs> Leaves it wide open. I am, like, I am your... vision gone. Like, okay, cool, dude. Like, that's uh, yeah. it's shit going on still. <laughs> right. Where are you going? I'm just gonna leave. Yeah. But if yeah. he got all her all his memories back or whatever, then, then why isn't he in love in love right with on. Wanda? You know. Yeah, they so, both should have fought and helped her, right? Yeah, like, you, you would think, but no. They, they this way having them fly off and doing some other thing, they can kill Vision without really killing Vision. It's like, oh, for fuck's sakes! Like this, right? Another cop out by Disney. So maybe yeah. me because like he didn't have the Mind Stone. He like he's, he's more computer than than Soul. Yeah, we don't know that. Right? If we had more time than just seeing him, I envision him flying <laughs> off. We don't know that. <laughs> it's like cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I still liked it. I thought uh, it, was good. Yeah, it wrapped I, up nicely. Yeah. It, it the ending was pretty pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. Like the very end, the end credits or whatever. Not the scrolls part. That was that was okay. But yeah. when she's in the mountains and then like she's having that? coffee on the front porch and then like her what? Scarlet Witch is like going through that Necromicon thing. Like, mm -hmm. whoa, what's going on here? See, like, that part bugged me. I was thinking it'd be a different ending than that, but that still bugged me because she's in the middle of nowhere. No one else is around her. Yeah, she's putting on this front of her, like, oh, I'm just this regular girl in this cabin drinking my coffee. Yet in the background, she's doing, she's looking through the book, looking through everything else. Why is she hiding? Who cares? No one else is around her to notice that. Well, why is that? Why is that secretly hidden? It shouldn't matter. I don't know maybe that. sword can pick up on her energy. I just, I thought it was like a, it kind of just showed how, you know, powerful she is. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I, like, I agree. You know, you you see, because she's essentially doing the same thing that. Um, Doctor Strange did where like the, you would leave your physical body and but like the body would mm -hmm. just be like you know unconscious but like now she's like almost has two separate consciousness going on. Mm -hmm. She totally does. That's what she I is, got from the whole thing. Yeah. She's got split personalities or something. But yeah, yeah, which is cool. Wow, uh, I yeah. I was looking for more than just a name drop from Doctor Strange. Oh, he, she's stronger than this Sorcerer Supreme. Well, <laughs> okay, what does that mean? It means fuck all right now. But yeah, whatever. Yeah. I wanted to know. Yeah, it's like, did, what did you want a Cumberbatch show up or something? Or like, no, I just wanted. I think it. a lot of people did. I think. I, I think what, people wanted a lot to happen in that. I one. wasn't mm -hmm. thinking that was going to happen. I thought way it was going to end was the end credit scene it would be, end the same way as it did before. You see her going in New York City, going into knocking on a door, or going to a building. You see it pan out, and you see it's the building at Doctor Strange's building in New York. She's going to get training, going to learn mm. her powers. Right, that's what kind of thought it was going with that, but. Because mm -hmm. that, that's her whole thing. She's powerful and strong, but with no training. So I think she learn. might be the bad guy in uh, 
or uh, part of part of part of the badness. Yeah, because I I, mean, I don't know if I'm like taking a leap here, but I I feel like the Scarlet Witch might have her own agenda and is using Wanda as a vessel to just whatever like mm-hmm. manipulator maybe I don't know. That's, That's true. What I'm I mean, She's yeah. more possessed than anything. I don't know. The the Scarlet Witch is new to all. This is no um yeah. There's no uh, like it, it being her own separate individual character. Like it's been never really shown before, so could right. be we're playing that angle with it. So yeah, we'll see. That's what I'm thinking, but who yeah. knows? And Eric, you, you wrote down a note here that says all that for a boner drink. Yeah. <laughs> so the Quicksilver cameo. Yeah. Yeah. All all this hypothetical. All everyone was thinking. Oh, now they're gonna maybe they're bringing <laughs> in mutants. Maybe they're doing all this stuff. Now it's all for a boner joke. That was yeah. the whole point of it. Yeah. Right. One big boner joke. It's like, oh god damn it. <laughs> that was pretty good though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of like that. It's like, you know what? No, he's just a random town's guy. It's like Yeah, it just happens to look yeah. like the a guy from another movie. <laughs> yeah. So uh, right. it's like ah, I like that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was good. Mm-hmm. I was happy with it. Yeah, I mean I, I, that's, that's a little mini series. I, I wanted it. more. That's what it did for me, so it's good. Mm-hmm. No, I definitely that's that's the mm-hmm. only thing I was upset about is I wanted Way more, for sure. And I, I will say, after like watching the first few episodes, being mad and be like, well, "I don't know what's going on." Like, is it getting frustrating? Like now, it's no, everything's answered, so it's I'm okay with yep. that. It's just yeah, yeah. I thought it was going a different way, but then it was, and yeah, it's yeah. all right. It's but branching anyway. off into different movies now, <laughs> right? But now we sure, Rambo will be in the next Captain Marvel, and then there'll be the Wanda and Doctor Strange, obviously, and uh-huh. whatever else. Who knows what else well, opened now- up. Well, now we wait another eight days, and we have a uh, Ka- Winter Soldier and Captain F- and Captain F- oh, not Captain Falcon, Falcon and yeah, Winter Soldier, Falcon and Winter Soldier, yeah. <laughs> Captain Falcon, <laughs> Captain Falcon, Falcon Pop. Um, yeah, yeah, that's happening next Friday. So, yeah, yeah. I am excited for that. Uh-huh. I think it's kind of kind of be like uh, it's supposed to be like a buddy kind of thing, but it, it I is, think they're yeah, also like going to be competing on like. All right, who's going to be the actual next Captain America? And we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they both, in the comics, they both do become yeah. Captain America. So it's, yeah, who, who, who's the, who's going to be the right person to wear the shield, right? So, right. Yeah. It'll be good. And then once that's done, what, Loki's next? Yes, I think so. I think Loki's coming out soon, too. It'll probably be right after this. I think it's after this. Yeah. I, I saw an article on Reddit. Like, there's only like, Three weeks this year where Disney doesn't release something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's awesome for Marvel and Disney fans. It's yeah. Oh it's, yeah. Because no, yeah, cool. at the start, I'm not gonna lie. When uh, we when I saw Disney Plus, I'm like, wow, this is pretty lackluster. But now mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, this is top notch. Pumping <laughs> <laughs> out content. And they just yeah, added they the, the star. The star. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was cool. They got the R-rated stuff on there now mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Finally got Deadpool on there. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have all FX? Sh- I haven't looked, but do they have all of the FX shows on there? Like, would they have Always Sunny on there? Uh, uh, they might, because I saw the strain on there. That was FX. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to have to check back on that one. Uh, do some vamping. I'll check right now. Vamp. He was a boss in Metal Gear Solid 2. That's right. Oh, yeah. And he was, and he was in uh, Guns of the Patriots, too. That's right. Oh. That's right. He was. Yeah. There's a creep show, Savage. Yeah. Yep. Only ever played uh, Metal Gear Solid Five only for a little bit. That was a no. fun game though. Yeah. Not seeing it on here. You mean the Phantom now. Pain? That one? Uh, yeah, Phantom Pain. Yeah, yeah Phantom Pain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, was fun. <sighs> that one. That one upset me. Uh, the Patriots. Were moved, oh, I guess because it doesn't have like a real ending. There wasn't an ending. I'm like, okay, what's the next <laughs> mission? I don't understand. Like what? Oh, what what now? Like the there's... next mission is Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I feel like I should probably play it because I'm a huge fan of his work, but I've heard it's just like lots of walking. It, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's you're, what you're it. a mailman. You gotta mm-hmm. deliver the packages. That's right. And you you know you can build roads, make it easier. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. That's amazing. Be careful, because if you stumble, you might drop all your stuff. <laughs> uh, all right. Are we mm. moving on to the news now? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. We got a couple of video game news stories to go, and then we'll 
move on to movies and TV. Uh, first one I really um, caught my eye and uh, is a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, video game is being released called Shredder's Revenge for PC and consoles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a 16-bit uh, style beat-em-up made by the guys who did um, the Scott Pilgrim beat-em-up game. And Ooh. yeah, I think this is going to be like a must play for us to kind of go through and just. Uh, yep. Uh, I saw that. I saw that. I'm like, oh, this is like bringing back like, old school <laughs> vibes because the old, old and intro style, the old cartoon and the gameplay, like the old yeah. Genesis and Super Nintendo games. Like, oh man, I this is my shit right here. I love this right? stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That was like almost the most impressive thing to me was their the opening intro animation. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, oh my god, is this the new Ninja Turtles TV? Or like, because it just said Shredder's Revenge. I'm like, is this a movie or something that they're coming out with? Like, it, the animation yeah. looks so good. And it's like, they had the same 80s style turtles. And I'm like, just make that a thing. <laughs> Get whoever yeah. made that to make them, give them a lot of money, make them make it 90 minutes long. <laughs> right. It's popular. Maybe they'll bring it back. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of whatever style they have now, which is kind of. Ugly. Uh, what about the movies? What about them? <laughs> Go what about you, what about The Michael Bay funded ones. <laughs> Only saw the first one of that and it was not good. Yeah, I got halfway through and oh. I just shut it off. I don't usually do that. They're like not the turtles were barely in it. It was just like here's Megan Fox's movie. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, exactly. And uh what's the other guy's name? Oh. Uh Will Arnett. Will Arnett, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, terrible. And it's like, oh, she she's the one who got the turtles out of whatever yeah. museum thing, or and it's like, what? No. Yeah, exactly. Stupid. <laughs> anyway, very stupid. Uh, moving on, we got um, Bethesda officially became a part of Xbox, and um, some of the Bethesda games will be Xbox <laughs> PC in exclusive under Microsoft. Oh, no, they say no more. No more Skyrim ports. Oh no! So they they in the article that Todd Howard says he doesn't think that the next Elder Scrolls will be. He doesn't see it being exclusive, um, mm -hmm. which I I'm inclined to believe. I think like you oh, look yeah. at like the fallouts and like those big hits. It's like you're leaving yeah. so much money on the table by not. Yeah. Oh yeah. It to, like, one thing, yeah. One thing Todd Howard won't do is he won't skip out and get more money. So yeah, yeah. If he can set me more money selling more consoles, he'll do it. <laughs> yeah, but oh, I can yeah. I can see like. Wolfenstein and maybe like Doom or something might be like the next one yeah. might be exclusive to PC and Xbox. I could see those, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a bummer. But hey, I got a computer, so I could still play. Sam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. But if they do that with the next uh, Elder Scrolls, and mm -hmm. that would be enough for me uh, to probably buy an Xbox. Yeah, that, I might. Yeah, because like. <laughs> It would look better on PC for sure, but it's, it's like yeah. you, you're sitting there for so long. It's like I'd rather sit on the couch and be more comfortable. On the big yeah. screen, yeah. taking all its yeah. glory. I'd be like, shame on you, Bethesda, as you called them. Be <laughs> Bethesda. <laughs> Bethesda. <laughs> Making me buy an Xbox. Bethesda. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I think they also just added a bunch of the Bethesda games onto Xbox Game Pass. Um, including like the Wolfenstein games and Fallout, New Vegas, Fallout 4, uh, Fallout 76, and the first three Doom games, but not the new Doom games. It's like, well, why aren't those on there? But whatever. Yeah, that's weird. <sighs> probably some contract stuff. That's probably Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, it could be. Doom 3 is still pretty good. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting because like Deathloop, which is supposed to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive, that's yeah. made by uh, Arcane Games, which is the guys who did Dishonored, who are part of Bethesda, right? So right, right. Like, that's kind of like the last. Yeah, the last one. thing they'll do. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's yeah. move on to movies and TV. Uh, first one here, I was super pumped, and Tyler shared it with uh, on Facebook with me, and uh, Michael B. Jordan ready to fight for new title as director. Of Creed 3 MGM dates film for Thanksgiving 2022. Wow. Is this his first directorial debut? I think so. It is. Yeah. I was looking at it before it started. Lots of producing yes, credits, but not first, first yeah. director credit. Yeah. 
So I'm, yeah, I'm I'm curious. Yeah, I'll be the director. Big but. movie, big movie to be your first first one. Yeah. But. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's obviously passionate about it, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah, you can tell just from how good of an actor he is and everything, and how dedicated to the role he is. He's probably yeah, it's probably a passion project. So it'll probably be really good, mm-hmm. just like the first Creed was. Yes, yeah. you haven't so, seen the second one yet, right? I have not. Oh, so good. So, so good. good. <laughs> <laughs> any any uh predictions on what this third one's gonna bring? Uh, gonna Rocky win? and Creed are gonna fight each other. Ooh. Uh, Mentor and protege fighting it out in the streets, just like in Rocky Five, the worst <laughs> Rocky movie ever made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have no idea actually. I I don't know. They already did the Drago stuff, so i be if I would say it'd probably be something new. It would be a uh, it won't pay homage to the older Rockies because there's really nothing else they can really talk about besides. Yeah. It's yeah. It's all kind of, the big one's been done. So yeah, he became world champion, right? Like yeah, yeah. So well, yeah, he defended it against Drago in two. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe maybe he'll have somebody that wants to get into boxing and he just ends up training them. Maybe, maybe. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. They might go somewhere a whole new direction. It won't be. It in could. Rocky Shadow, no more. It'd be something different. Maybe something happens to him. He gets injured and he can't box anymore. So he opens up his own gym and starts a thing for people that want to be boxers mm-hmm. or something. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah. I mean, Drago was the one big thing where, like, that was a good thing to pull from the Rocky past to bring forward. Mm-hmm. The first one was yeah. about being him being Apollo Creed's son and becoming a fighter. Second one was uh, avenging Rock uh, Apollo's legend against Drago and mm-hmm. right. I mean, yeah, but right. what's left now? So it's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who knows? Now, it's wide open. And mm-hmm. now he's a father, of course. Is his? Uh-huh. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up spoiling it for you. I'm sorry, Tyler. But <laughs> nah, whatever. I probably won't um, watch it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, his his daughter is uh is deaf. We find uh-huh. that out. Um. Oh. So we'll see how that plays into that sort of thing. And yeah. uh, at the end of end of Creed Two, you had Rocky going to visit his son and seeing his his grandson. Um. Mm-hmm. We'll see how. That plays out. I think Rocky might die. Yeah. I think that's. I think that's where it's going. Unfortunately, yeah. The first one, he was sick, right? He ended up having cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah. That was know, really upsetting. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Was, yeah. That, yeah, that felt real. All of a sudden, it's like, oh my god, is I gotta give it to Sly, man. You know what? Mm-hmm. He gets into his roles. Ah, he's. Oh yeah. He's good. He's good. He does. Yeah. He's quite good. So yeah, we'll see. Some people are like, get. This guy to play, uh, what's his fr- freaking name? Um, the Mister T, <laughs> his son. Oh, I, like, I don't know, man. <laughs> we don't need right. any more people's sons fighting. It's like, yeah, it's, that's okay. Right. I, I wouldn't, you know, it, I wouldn't mind like maybe seeing like a rematch between him and like Drago's son or something like that. Maybe continue his story as well. But mm-hmm. yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm excited either way. Can't wait. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Black Widow news. Disney CEO insists the movie will arrive on May 7th in theaters. In theaters or on in Disney? Theaters. In theaters. In theaters. He in specifies theaters. in the call on Tuesday with his with shareholders. It's going to be in theaters. Man, that's so frustrating waiting this long. I've yeah. been waiting a long time to see this one. I'm and while well, Carly is extremely excited to see that one, so hopefully they stick to that. That's in fifty seven mm-hmm. days. Ooh, that's close to half. That's really close to two months. I don't understand. So the reason why they delayed it was just because no one was no one would be able to see it. That's why yeah. it wasn't for yeah. like, they, they probably figured it'd be more successful if they showed it in the theaters. But everyone has Disney Plus by this point. What does it matter? They're trying to keep the theaters alive, man. I guess, yeah. I want to put people in the seats. Stimulate the theater. Yeah. Yeah, they do have, They do own shares, I think, in like AMC or probably you know, owner or something like that. So they have like... Yeah. yeah. Well, I can I'll... see that being the case, but I don't know. I'm, I'm liking it not having to go to that in a way. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think yeah. the, the problem with like releasing on Disney Plus, the only one that's kind of been successful is Soul, and that's because they gave it for free. You didn't have to pay anything extra yeah. for it. Like this, this Ray on the Last Dragon hasn't been doing so great, from what I've heard. And yeah, because I'm not gonna pay for it. I was wait thirty days. Yeah, exactly. Like, so yeah. <laughs> that's what people are probably do with Black Widow, right? I was like with Mulan. I'm like, I'm not paying money for no. No, <laughs> exactly. Well, like dumb. maybe Black Widow would be different, but I don't know. It's like, eh. 
I still know. Like it's oh, if I can wait, you know, two months, it comes for free. I'll wait two months. I waited right. like over a year to see the latest Spider-Man movie, and that's Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just wanted to see what you're like. They get a heat check from you guys. Are, are you guys excited for Black Widow still? Like every time, oh, like yeah. it, it got delayed, it's yeah. like okay. And like I, I'm like not as hype as it was like nearly at all because it's been a while. And but yeah. well, that was like with me with Cyberpunk. Like the last time that they delayed it, I'm like, well, whatever. But every time they did delay it before that, I was like, ugh, come on, you guys. Like yeah. I want to see this. And then the last time, it's like, well, sure, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Just well, let me know when you're ready. I guess. Yeah. Stop. So I'm I yeah. am actually pretty pumped to see it. I'm pretty pumped. Yeah, it, it looked good. Taskmaster is supposed to be in it, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's I, the only that one. Yeah, that's the only thing that I'm kind of excited about. Taskmaster is yeah. cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, wish we see him more. Hopefully, see more of him. He's one of my favorite villains. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's small time compared to all the eternal mm. enemy. Yeah. That's another thing I wanted to ask is like, what's the end credit? Like what's it tying into next? Yeah. Who Cause knows? like this is in the past, right? Uh, this is, yeah. yeah. Before this, is, everything. this is before end game. Mm-hmm. So they this have, is before end game, but after infinity war or, that, or? That's, that's what I thought it was. It's between the two. It is. Hey, no, no, sorry. It's, be- yeah, it's after the five years. It's after the snap. Yeah. Okay, so but in that five years, she yeah, okay. yeah. That's what that's why I thought it was because that's the only thing that makes sense with that timeline because she's dead Unless, otherwise. <laughs> they right. it was after that. Civil War or something? I don't know. Maybe, but what happens? No, because in Civil War she goes in. Oh, she goes into hiding, I guess. But yeah, maybe she goes back to Russia. Maybe it. Maybe it is after that. Then okay, maybe it is after Civil War. Uh, maybe there's a spoiler on IMDb. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Does Black Widow spoil it for everybody? A film about Natasha Romanoff in I'm her, sure. quest, maybe in her quest between the films Civil War and Infinity War. Okay, it I was is right. Mm. 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 That's like forever ago. <laughs> yeah, it is exactly. Yeah. Old news. We don't need this movie anymore. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's just Black Widow. Here's that. What the end credit is going to be? You got Black Widow. She's coming out of some building, and she's like, "Who are you?" And the like, camera pans over, and it's just Camille and Johnny just. With his shirt off, and he's like super jacked. He's like, I'm an immortal. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's going to be her dyeing her hair blonde because she's blonde in uh, Infinity War. So, okay. I don't know. That's all I can see. All, all I see happening is that. So, Maybe I like, I like my scene. Maybe. Maybe she's a public enemy of the Russians at the end of it, and she has to dye her hair to fit back yeah. in. No, I don't Maybe. know. The whole world knows who she is that she's exactly. an Avenger, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yes. Who knows? I should have put this one. Or never mind. I'm thinking this. I'm looking at a different one. Anyways, Steven Spielberg and the Duffer Brothers, the guys who make uh, Stranger Things, are teaming mm-hmm. up to uh, adapt Stephen King's book, The Talisman. I don't know anything about this book. But I like the pairing, and I like Stephen King, and I like Stranger Things, and I think this is just kind of like chocolate a, peanut butter situation, you know? It is. It's a very good recipe. Yeah. Yeah. All the ingredients are there. You just got to put it together properly. Well, I mean, like, I think about the, every, every Stephen King thing, I think about the, the Dark Tower. Because mm-hmm. you were hyping that one up, Tyler. I remember when, when I was working with you then, you were talking, like, the, the books were awesome. Movie came out and it was shit. Well, like, I haven't, nothing, nothing I haven't like seen the movie. Really. I just, I heard the reviews. I'm like, ooh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I can. Uh... Like, yeah, I mean, like, that's what I don't understand. Like, hopefully, you know, with Stephen King, it's either going to be decent or it's going to be just like, it's going to be, um, what yeah. the hell is the one with the trucks where the vehicles go sentient and kill people? Uh, maximum overdrive. Like, right. What the hell? Like, there's no, like, in, in between with them. It's either really good or really bad. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, there was a couple of books that were adapted on Netflix uh, for Stephen King that were that were pretty good, actually. Uh, what's that one with uh, the guy that plays Punisher? Thomas Jane. It's like in 1921, I think it's called. It's where he uh, he murders his wife because his wife wants to sell the farm and it's whatever. And then he throws her down the well. And then he starts losing his mind, thinking that she's like alive still. 
and uh, he's trying to hide the body because people are coming and looking for her and stuff. So he like ends up killing a cow and throws it on top of her in the well to make it look like an accident so that they don't go down there and <laughs> look for her body because they'll see the cow and yeah. stuff. It's just like, what? And it was like really good. And it's really close to the book. And hmm. so that was that was pretty good. It, it didn't do very well, obviously, because probably because of the material and how like dramatic and awful mm. it was. But uh, and then they did uh, Gerald's game on there, which I thought they did awesome on. They did a couple little changes. So, like you say, like some some adaptations are really good, and others yeah, are just yeah. like like the cell. Just what what, what? the fuck were you yeah. guys thinking? Yeah. Like, and then Stephen King hypes it up too because he makes royalties off all this stuff. Oh yeah, go see it. It's the scariest movie I've seen. The scariest adaptation. Like Stephen King will just say whatever. <laughs> I make money. You can't trust the guy, but you can trust his books. His books are all very good. Right. But uh, his movies, I don't know. Well, this this is just it's got a good. Good uh, potential, but uh, I say that, but I have, this is probably one of the only ones, one of the few that I haven't read yet. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't really know what this one's even about. Yeah, I got some details here from the, the article. So yeah, it's going to be a, a series produced and made made for uh, Netflix. Okay. And uh, it says, the talisman tells of a 12-year-old boy named Jack Sawyer who sets off on an epic road trip quest to, in order to save his dying mother's life. He is in search of the talisman, a powerful relic that can only that can not only heal his mother, but as he learns, save the world. So Sawyer, Sawyer's journey crisscrosses two realities: the America we know and its dangerous fantasy world twin, the territories. That's so huh. Stephen King. Wow. Sounds all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it makes sense. That you you would get the the Stranger Things guys if it's going to be like a. You know, it's uh, the world and the upside story. down. It's all yeah. tying together. <laughs> well, I meant more like about the kid actor, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, oh, yeah. 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 it would be uh, yeah. just reading that kind of makes me more excited about it. So, well, oh yeah, we'll see what happens. But of course, they're just they're Steve Spielberg and these guys are only producers on the show. They're not actually going to be directing and stuff. So we'll see. You know, if if they're just names on it or or what. Hmm. Like yep, yeah, some yeah. guy named Christopher Nolan and these DC EU <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Anyways, moving on. Uh, oh, I didn't. I didn't even put it in, in this. In this, but like me saying DC EU reminds me of. Did you guys see that Justice League? Uh, just Justice League leaked on uh, HBO oh, yeah. Max. Like people went to go watch what was it? Tom, Tom and Jerry, the Tom and Jerry movie, and they got yeah. like two hours of, <laughs> of Justice Even, League. Yeah, the, oh Justice God. League yeah. yeah, yeah, they removed I it by now, but it was like, how does that happen? <laughs> but, yeah, well, it's weird little link mix up. It's all it mm -hmm. should happen. Yeah. I don't understand how that happens. Mm. Yeah, it's weird. Are you guys mm -hmm. gonna watch that, Eric? You said you're gonna watch. Oh, Justice I'm definitely League. gonna watch that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't uh, know. I don't it's four uh, hours. <laughs> so it's not. Long. No, it's four one-hour episodes. Yeah, not but still, <laughs> it's just the miniseries. Just think, look at it that way. It's all it is. My guess, it's yeah. the same movie with extra stuff in it. Yeah, let's just put more things in Two there. I, I, I know it's going to be bad. I'm sure. I don't really don't care. I'm just going to enjoy it for what it is. That's all. How's so. like the uh, Snyder's cut? Like at at this point, like how can you call it the Snyder's cut? Well, because he had a completely different vision than what oh, yeah. the well, because he he filmed it halfway through, and then they got Josh Sweden to come in and change. No, no, well, yes and no. They got him to come in because his daughter committed suicide. That's why he had to kind of leave. Right, and yeah, then he had know. a different way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He had a totally different idea for the movie. Yeah, had more humor to it, and yeah, we didn't kind of add standard, like that. his original his original script wasn't going to be four hours long. Of course, he's like been adding like extra. No, stuff. But that's a Schneider uh, pencils down, knowledge. Snyder pencils down. Okay, yeah. just leave it <laughs> overboard. Yeah. Anywho, mm -hmm. uh, actor Florian Montuno. He was in Creed too. He was Drago's son. Uh, okay. He's joining Kate Blanchett and Kevin Hart in the Borderlands movie. Oh, who cares? This movie the casting, is going to be bad. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the casting, I'm like, and the director, I'm like, I can't see this. Yeah, I can't exactly. Only, you know, only, Eli Roth made the first Hostel. That was okay. Cabin Fever was campy and okay, but everything else is just no. Like, I don't know about that. Unless it's going to be animated, it's this movie's uh, going to be terrible. 
And yeah, I it's, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, it's, or he's going to prove us all wrong. Why did you exactly. get Kevin Hart to play Roland? If, if you're going to get Kevin Hart in the movie, make him f- clap trap. Like, God damn. Yes. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> put him in a box and put a wheel on it. Let him drive around. <laughs> <Do I not, laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> it's all, I don't know. It's Dude, terrible. I don't know. Can you just like see Kevin Hart being like a big tough general? Yeah. No. No. No nonsense Absolutely guy. Not. No <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, no. to the point. Oh, five five, 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 five no. foot eight. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to expand his horizons. I'm not just a funny guy anymore. Yeah, okay. How mm. they could Kate Bland shit? <laughs> what? Obviously yeah, she has a much better roles that she could have been doing. Why is she doing this? Maybe she's a big fan of the game or something. Maybe. She could be. Maybe she's got nephews and nieces that are like, we like this game. You should be in it. Doing it for the kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they also announced who's playing Tiny Tina, and I was like, ugh. Yeah, I didn't even know who that was. Oh, that crazy girl? Yeah. No, I know the character, but who the actress is, though, I have no idea. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah who, who, I, I, I honestly, I, I don't, I'm not going to follow that, I don't think. Mm-hmm. I don't think. If it comes out on Netflix, maybe eventually in like a year or two, I'll probably check it out. But Ariana Greenblatt, what was she in? Uh... Vamp. You guys uh, are fucking terrible at vamping. We're not. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't vamp. I can't think of the spot. I freak out. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's what she was. She was. She was Tony Stark's uh, daughter. I think. Is what she? Oh, was. really? An in game? I mean, no. Uh, She's in Infinity War. Who is she in Infinity War? Bam! No, I'm just kidding. Girl in Infinity War. Oh my War. god. Oh, she was young, Gamora. Gamora. young Gamora. That's who, who she was. Uh, no, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she's young Velma in Scoob. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Haven't seen that one either. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I brought it up because I thought she was going to be she was Tony Stark's daughter, but it's not her. Anyways, moving on, <laughs> we got Nomad Land coming to Disney Plus Canada in April 9th. Um, this is the only thing I I'm the only one who probably cares about this because I was going through all the the Golden Globe nominees and this one this was the one that won uh, best drama there. And okay. it was not streaming anywhere, so I couldn't watch it. And yeah, so it's coming to Disney Plus on April 9th. Excited to see it. It's, uh, it's, I don't know what the, the story is. All I know is about like a, a person who kind of like lost their home in, um, like the big market crash in 2008, and they become like, they just have uh, a camper or an RV and they like travel across the states and just, camp out with other people who also kind of lost their stuff so okay kind of interesting it looked it looked very pretty and it was like filmed on like a six million dollar budget so it's interesting mm. to see how that one i'm curious to see how good it is mm-hmm. yeah interesting uh, yeah and of course this week is the biggest story you cannot get away from it and mm. uh <laughs> we're gonna talk about it probably for like two minutes but the Harry Prince Harry and Meghan Markle Oprah interview, and first off, I don't understand why people care about the royal family, and yes. why and why you would care that people don't want to be a part of the royal family, and why you would criticize people for like you know what, man, nah, we're gonna go live in the states instead of this kingdom. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Um. I know what I read in the memes about this and that's it. <laughs> that is as much as I know. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The one thing, I, the one good part is, is that Piers Morgan is not on TV anymore. Cause he quit his job from good. Uh, Did he quit? Good, I heard he yeah. walked off. He, he walked off. And then, uh, later that day is like, he, he said that he's, he was done on that oh, show. Yeah. Well, I'll be a little bitch. That's all. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, he was saying he was saying some pretty nasty stuff. Like mm. like Megan was saying in in, oh, yeah. the, in the interview that she she was suicidal at one point, which mm-hmm. you know I I can get like she's like everybody like what what's she gonna be sad about? It's like well if you kind of you know 
I, I know probably more about this because my sisters are like into the royal family. So I just hear about this and they've been talking about it a lot in the group chat. And I've yeah. just kind of been like, whatever, I don't care. But, right. you know, like her, her relationship with her dad is like so incredibly toxic. And oh. then it's like, yeah, it's like her dad's like constantly like trying to like get in on her fame and like she's like cut him out of her life. But he keeps like. Popping up in the news is like, oh, I just want to apologize to Megan and blah 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 blah. It's like, it's like, uh, dude, just like leave her alone, like. Right. And then it's like, well, now she gets married to, you know, the person she loves. I would say, and then her family is like also treating her like garbage. <laughs> so it's like, oh man, like she just can't catch a break. Like, and apparently they were racist towards her son, sort of like they're like, oh, they're concerned about how dark of skin he was gonna have because she's half black, of course, and. And it's like, oh man, and then Piers Morgan's like, you know, give me the names of the doctor she saw when she was feeling suicidal, and blah. It's like, fuck you, man, <laughs> like get out of here. And so he received like forty-one thousand complaints. The TV station did for his comments. Yeah, yeah. So what a piece of work. Yeah, just let him be, man. Like fuck it. Like why does everybody <laughs> got to be up in their grill? You know. Yeah. Just let them sleep on their millions. In <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're just jealous. Yeah, if they <laughs> want to give me some of that money, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh man, we're at an hour already. But, well, let's wrap it up here. Yeah, man. Well, we oh always said God. that this, this these ones are going to be longer because... That's true. We'll, we'll go, we like got lots to talk about. Um, and the last story here is Pepe Le Pew not slated for future Warner Brothers te television pro pro projects. <laughs> I, was say produ I, was, I was saying productions and then I read projects and it just like screwed me up. And he's also not going to be in, in the new Space Jam movies. Of course, if people don't know why, it's because he's a rapist. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's his, his whole gimmick is that he. Kisses a cat that doesn't want to be kissed. <laughs> like, that's his thing. Okay. And he's a <laughs> rapist. Okay. <laughs> well, then, Miss Piggy should be kicked out then, too. Because hey. she always tries to force herself on Kermit. Kermit okay? wants, yeah, doesn't want any of that, yeah. Yeah, but they're yeah. married. <laughs> that's okay. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, if they're married, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I did right. it before. <laughs> Don't rape your spouse. <laughs> uh, <See? sighs> no, oh. I mean, I'm... I think they like people are like, why are they doing this? It's like, well, I get it. It's, in, in a way, I get it too. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Do kids these days even know who Peppa the Pew is? Exactly. Just like, who, on to the next character. who fucking cares? Who's man? pining to see I mean, Pepe Le Pew? It's not Bugs yeah, Bunny exactly. or Daffy Duck that yeah. we're losing here. I, it's, yeah, I'm gonna boycott the movie because the rapist skunk's <laughs> not gonna be in it. Uh, <laughs> nobody cares. Fuck. I'm French and I'm not. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> shown in this movie. What the hell? Mm -hmm. not yeah. Represented. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much to say, but I'm like, oh, who's say it. <laughs> Go and no. say it. No, you can't make me. <laughs> no, yeah. It's French, who's not in it. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. Castle culture. It's, uh. Oh, yeah. It's. It's going it's places. Next level, man. No. Yeah. It has reached an all time peak. Mm hmm. Frick. Oh, well. I mean, like. Pepe the Pew was he, like it just he, whatever yeah okay like he was a greasy character like a like <laughs> scumbag character whatever right it just goes to show you what kind of life we used to live when we were kids this is what we were brought up with this is where we're starting a new path here with with our kids right like so this just move on mm -hmm. who cares don't make a big thing out of this right I don't know yeah like who did he who did he hurt come on that's yeah that's kind of my idea too it's he the whole like point a, of his character was he was meant to be like that because it's just a dark humor that people yeah, just these it, days just can't ha ah whatever i'm not no gonna, one no one aspired to be like him and if you did no. you're definitely in the wrong that's the whole exactly. yeah it's and you're just a douchebag yeah you're just <laughs> right? a terrible human being if if you saw that and got inspired to be like him, yeah. then yeah that's more more problems there than just your exactly. character <laughs> it's odd, exactly so. Just yeah, fuck off. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, I get where they're coming from because, like, mm -hmm. it's the same thing with you know. There's, there's been other controversies with the Looney Tunes. Um, you had 
all the racist stuff with <laughs> Bugs Bunny. So it's like, oh, well, for sure. you know, yeah, you don't want that to be out there because you don't want like freaking kids being like doing like Chinese accents or something like that, trying to be like or, the Chinese Bugs or, Bunny. Uh, the right. Is, um, the mouse, the speeding of the it, is his cousin. Yeah, his cousin who's <laughs> like, slow <laughs> Yeah, like, like, it's like, okay. Fuck. <laughs> You don't want people like making fun of like Mexican people and you yeah. Know, it's, like, it's like all right, and you know you don't want people laughing at like inappropriate touching. <laughs> I guess. Oh, for sure, yeah. I agree completely with that. One hundred and ten percent. Like, I, don't get me wrong. Like, like when I when I see it, you know, like YouTube videos will show like like uh, Roadrunner stuff and whatever, right? And I'll watch it. And I'll be like, oh my god, I can't believe this was a kid's show, and I move on with my life. Mm-hmm. That's about as much as it affects me. It's like, oh man, like. This is so bad. Like, yeah, yeah. But that's that's about as much as it affects me. But I guess they got they got like flack too because they they got rid of the guns in the new Looney Tunes, which you know they're like they're, they're, what, they're, what's your, somebody say I'm like firing when he goes all rooty tooty howdy. I don't know. Yeah, like that's his whole character. <laughs> it is totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. They, the, oh, Jesus. The, the the argument they gave though it was kind of made like they said like there's plenty of ways to hurt the Looney Tunes without guns. <laughs> it's like yeah, that's true. Yes, they have. They I have guess the rockets blown up and oh yeah, the giant mallet giant over the head is so and... uh, yeah, it's oh jeez yeah. yeah, fuck whatever. There you go. Mm. There we go. That's gonna do it for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> if you Saving. enjoyed it. Uh, like and subscribe here on YouTube and uh, share with your friends, of course, and do the same thing on Apple Podcasts, Google, Google Podcast, Spotify, all that jazz. Uh, like us on Facebook as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on Monday for Ask Us Anything. Yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. See you guys. Oh, and happy birthday to Leia. Oh, yes, Leia. Oh, yeah. Princess Leia <laughs> turns two. Yay! Yes. Yay. <laughs>